friends here and um, actually moved to Winnipeg um, mm -hmm. because it was closer to Minneapolis. It's a seven hour drive, like how Chicago's close. Um, and again, I did the back and forth for a long time. And mm -hmm. then here I am. I'm in the Twin Cities with two amazing sons for, um, yeah, two amazing sons live in St. Paul in the Rondo community. I have six bonus children that I helped, you know, assist most in raising. And um, That's good. So how was, how was that transition from Canada to Trinidad? I mean, I mean, going through it at the age of 10, it was tough. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have my mom. I didn't have my dad. I was living with my granny. Uh, my Auntie Cammie, may she rest in peace. Cousin Kalita, may she rest in peace. Um, it was tough going through it. I was, you know, I was moved from home to home. Um, I was somebody else's child and not my own, my, not in my own home. Um, it was tough. It was tough going from a first world country to a third world country where uh, the basic amenities um, that you have in your home, such as a washer or a dryer or um, lights or whatever, was mm -hmm. not guaranteed every single day. Mm -hmm. um, and then in Trinidad, schooling is in uniforms, so getting acclimated to um, wearing uniforms in middle school, high school, um, and uh, adapting to their norms uh, and their mores and values. It is still, it's a very religious country. Mm -hmm. They celebrate all different religions and every creed and race has an equal place. Um, but also uh, women, young women have their place. Mm -hmm. uh, big on respect and how you respect your elders and the community. So it was, it was very tough to navigate it. Going through it, I did not like it at all. I was like, why am I here? This is, this is like living in boot camp almost, you know, and um, and in my older age, I, I, I so appreciate having that blessing. Right. Yeah. Right. So you, you mentioned something just now. You said uh, how, how respect for elders. Yeah. Uh, we live in a society where um, most young people don't really value the respect of the elders. How do you feel about that? Um, it's not on my radar. I, everywhere I go, I have I show everybody respect until it's proven otherwise. And even when it's proven otherwise, I continue to respect myself um, because we're in challenging times mm -hmm. and people just don't even know how to have self-love. But um, I actually, unfortunately, had to go back home to Trinidad for two funerals. My youngest, my 19-year-old, came with me and you can see that I have transferred that knowledge to him. Right. You have to say good morning, you have to say good evening, whether it is the gentleman who is doing hustling in the street uh, and who might be homeless or the doctor that lives across the road, you still have to show respect to everybody and impo most importantly your elders and your community. So I still try to live with that intention um, and apply those rules to my everyday life. Um, simple fact of good morning, good afternoon. People text me and they'll be like, hey, did you see this? Good morning. Right, exactly. Good afternoon. How are you? Right. Can I get a salutation? <laughs> Can you address me in a happy form? <laughs> a greeting, you know? Um, and when people when, when people say, you know, as far as respect, it comes down from generation to generation. Or they say, oh, your generation is just doesn't have any respect or core value. I think that, you know, you definitely said something where you said you put that, you instilled that into your sons. Yeah. And that's what I think mostly, you know, you, you, when you see something, when, a, uh, let's say an older person sees a young person doing something wrong, don't shake wow. your head. Yeah. yeah. You, 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 you let them know, you can only let them know, you know, it's up to them to accept it or, yeah. or, or just let but it go through one or the other. Manner, I mean, of too. course it's, yeah, it's not what you say it's how you say how it too. You say yeah. It too. You yeah. can't be like, just come with these kids aggressive because again, we know times, especially in the twin cities are very delicate. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, you give respect, you get respect. Right. You know, a lot of people don't even realize my age. They think I'm still very young. And so, for me, it's I'm going to always walk in with a How old are you, 25? You 25? <laughs> yeah. 24 and a half? Yeah, 24 and a half. <laughs> I'm always going to walk into a respectful situation. Right. I'm always going to keep that level playing field because I don't know who's in the room or who's around me. Mm -hmm. That could be a value one day in my life. It could be a future employer. It could be my son's coach, whatever. Um, but the moment you start acting out of pocket, I learn to just remove myself. Because right. again, I respect myself so much that you are not going to uh, 
um, risk everything that I've worked hard for the last how many decades of my life. Right. Um, and that was just that respect that was passed down to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, I've been in situations where people don't speak when you walk into the room, and that's a big deal for me. Right, right, um, right. It's like down south. Like, you have to, like, raise your head up. Good morning. Right, right, right. Good afternoon. Hello. How right, are exactly. you? Right, um, exactly. And unfortunately, nowadays, we're just like, you know correct um and you walk you literally walk into a wall when you do that mm -hmm. um meaning you not walking into a space and addressing people and showing people that you're connected right uh to where you're at it's a huge loss a greeting right it's All important right. to let people know they're a value and that they deserve a space in your life at that moment which should start with respect and honesty that's right yeah Core values. Core values. Um, it's important. I don't think, unfortunately, even in prison, you have to have a certain respect to the officer in charge. You don't. You end up. In, of course, on yeah. the bad side, yeah, and if you need side, something, we don't want you to get to that bad side. Right. So how do you, how do you most importantly show yourself that self love and respect? Um, and if you don't get it at home, there's so many YouTube videos and TikToks and Snapchats about it that. You can you can build it on your own, but it's important to get by in life. You have yeah. to have it. Yeah, I, I think it comes down to just treating people how you want to be treated. Period. Say it again. Treating people how you want to be treated. Treating people how you want to be treated. All um, right. We're gonna go to the next segment because I still will keep us on time. Trinity right. C, Big Tufa, we right back. This is Caddy, the Prince of Darkness of KMOJ Radio and the original Quiet Zone. And when I'm not doing my thing, I check out Hip Hop Nation on First World TV. Shout out to you, DJ Divine, and of course, OTI. Bye. Bye. And we're back. And we're back. So, Miss Trini C, uh, I know you have di uh, many different titles, uh, what you got your hands in, you know, from party promotions to hosting events. Um, but just tell me a little bit about how you got started in your career. Yeah. I'm going to say real quickly, I think the greatest title that I – have the honor of wearing is mom. I love all of my children, my grand, my, my God's children. Um, grandchildren. Yeah, I got some grandchildren, they're just not mine. Oh, okay, you know what okay, I mean? Okay. Like, as far as like my bonus children have babies. So, oh, okay. Um, I'm still Trini, but um, that's, I yeah, uh, that is one of the greatest titles I hold is I love being a mom. I love empowering my sons to fulfill their dreams, not my dream, fulfill their dreams. Uh, being part of the formula so that they can be successful black men out here, whatever their measure of success looks like. I got into the, I am a, uh, I have an accounting degree when I came to the States. I got an accounting degree. I got bored after seven years at RBC Wealth Management. My passion has been doing events. I had the honor when I lived in Trinidad of asking Auntie Cami, may she rest in peace, if I could hold a little get together at our family house uh, during the holidays. Okay. My get together turned out to be 300 people. I didn't realize I was friends with one of the biggest DJs who's actually Marsha Montano's manager now from Chinese Laundry, but I didn't realize right. I was rocking and rolling and just hanging out at one of the schools with some of the most powerful players. And for me, it was just music. Um, my great uncle was a big Calypsonian, Roaring Lion. Uh, it was built in our DNA. My aunt, as I said, everything in Trinidad is a production. If you have friends over on a Friday night, it's a lime. So we go above and beyond to host and hospitality and the music has to be right and whatever, whatever. So I didn't realize what I was dipping my toe into at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I didn't realize how much I had a love for it until years later. Um, and I did my first, like I said, my first official promotion mm -hmm. uh, at the sweet age of 16 at our, our house called Pretty Penny up in Maraval uh, that ended up being, yeah, 300 people. We had a prong side, all of that. I came to Canada. I was dating uh, a promoter and didn't really realize what, I w what was going on. He just okay. used to promote big shows in Edmonton, um, like Stone Love and all that good stuff. Um, it wasn't until I came down to the Twin Cities, I actually was a singer as well. Um, I paid for a song, and the producer did me wrong. <laughs> that rhymes, literally. Did you um, wrong how? Did me wrong. And you don't, what you mean, did you wrong? I mean, you don't have to go in there. I mean, he sold the song that I gave him. Well, he gave the song to somebody else after I'd paid for it. I paid $500 for it. 
Um, and I was ending up, Elephant Man had just signed to Bad Boy, um, and I was an opening act for that show. I was the only, I probably still am the only female in the Midwest that did the type of music that I did, um, dance hall as far as Patra, Lady Saw, right, Candy right, Stevens, right. but the Trini, right? The Trini version, not the Jamaican. And so I opened up for Ellie. I redid a song called Think We're Alone Now in the dance hall version. Uh, Think we're alone now. Um, we did that dance hall version to open up for Ellie. Unfortunately, the promotions of Ellie and the way that show ran, um, right. he had just signed with Bad Boy, as I said, was not up to par. It was not a great experience for our Caribbean artists to come to a big city like Minneapolis, which at that time was still booming because of Prince, Janet Jackson, Jimmy Jam, all of that, and have a horrible experience here. He had waited, had to wait three days to get paid from what I call the demoter, not the promoter. Right. Um, and I was like, this is BS. And I wasn't getting the respect from the men in the community because that's what happens when you're a female in the industry. Um, young and vivacious, right? right? Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, you're looked at the video vixen or you're looked at a pawn in the game of chess. Right, right. And I was like, I'm gonna create the respect for myself um, in this industry. And I didn't even know what I was getting into. I just wanted to throw parties, throw quality Caribbean parties in the Twin Cities. My first event was Chuck Ademus and Pliers at a venue called Visage, which is now the Underground Cafe, the entire venue. Mm -hmm. I packed out with almost 700 people. I was not, nobody knew me here. I, I did the traditional radio and handing out pluggers, flyers. Okay. And literally 700 people were in both sides of Visage. It was outstanding. It's the only time the kings of dance hall have been here. Chuck Ademus and Pliers has the hottest song. Uh, to this date, Murder, She Wrote, all of that good stuff. Um, and I got a few more. Yeah, and yeah. then after that, I did a dance hall queen. And again, dance hall queen is a big competition in Jamaica, big part of dance hall. Of Everybody course. told me I couldn't do it. Right. Um, and I packed out a venue called Red Sea. And when I tell you I packed out the Red Sea, yeah. both sides, outside, around the club, wanted the, the owners to this day probably have told me, outside of my cousin AK, that... I've had the highest selling show at that venue. And I worked myself into a niche, which was dance hall, not Soka, okay. not Calypso, but dance hall, which as a Trini, mm -hmm. here I am coming into their market, and they're probably like, you're a Trini, like stay in your lane. Well, you know, in the Caribbean, there is no lanes when you drive in traffic. I mean, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so you couldn't tell me nothing. Right. Um, and I had the honor hosting the biggest dance hall event in, in the Midwest again. There was one, there's one in Chicago, which is the Midwest dance hall queen. But I connected with Brian Martin, Big Head, founder, Big Head International, who hosts the international competition in Jamaica. And I started doing competitions everywhere and getting on his team. And then just growing my name and my brand, again, within the Jamaican dance hall market, um, the Caribbean market here, um, but I, d I didn't even realize I was what I was doing. Right. The first time I got on stage was in Winnipeg, um, singing, actually singing in a big, big festival up there called Black Arama. Um, and that was over 25 years ago. And Full Circle was last July. I went back up to host the big Soka Reggae Festival in Winnipeg. And I was like, there's no way I thought I'd still be in this game. There's no way I thought I'd be in the game, period, like this, but still in the game 25 years later. Um, so, okay, so with that being said, very briefly, uh, what advice would you have for women who's trying to follow your path or trying to climb that ladder? Yeah, um, so recently in the last five years, what I have started doing is sharing my wealth of knowledge specifically to certain women of color that want to tap into this industry. Because uh, it was tough for me. I had people try to sell me out. I had uh, producers try to have me sign record contracts. A lot of hate. People say they don't hate me, but believe you and me, they wouldn't even let me take the mic, and people were just calling for me to take the mic. So what I've taken with that knowledge, I actually want to write a book about it. I really do, um, being a promoter, a female promoter, um, outside of my niche. But I've started sharing the knowledge with women that want to get in, whether it's producing, whether it is um, TV show, whether it is promoting shows. Um, and I just started sharing the gifts and the jewels that I had. I can talk more about that when we come back from break, but um, there's a lot of there's a lot to it. All right.
My name is Dr. Zakia Robbins McNeil, and when I'm in the Twin Cities, I watch On Stage Live on Hip Hop Nation's Twin Cities, brought to you by First World TV. We're back. You're now here with Mr. Tufa and Miss Trini C. Right. So, Miss Trini, how you doing today? I'm doing blessed. All I'm right. Blessed. Yeah. So now in the year 2024. Yes. Well, tell us a couple things you have going on. I thought I was going to stop. Last year I decided I was just going to hang it up when it came to the industry. Okay. Uh, one of my biggest fans, Carmelita De Leon, my aunt, who I said a while back basically got me started. She was tragically stolen from us with my cousin and I believe she's talking to me. I'm so sorry. What do you mean stolen from you? Uh, they were both murdered January 2nd due to domestic violence. In oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So um, she's made me half of what I am today outside of my children. Uh, she was my mom when my mom couldn't be my mom. And she's always been one of my biggest supporters. So my gosh, you're working with the Marleys, you're working with the Tana, you're working with Morgan Heritage. Like she's just always been in the background, sending me WhatsApp messages, calling me, sending me IG messages. And so in honor of her um, and my cousin and my family, I'm gonna keep on going. And I uh, wanna continue to take this media thing to the next level, but um, there's still a couple more shows that I wanna do. Okay. Um, when it comes to big soca dance hall Caribbean parties. Okay. Yeah. Do you do you think that could be like a lane for artists that's in Minnesota? Definitely. Okay. I okay. think when it comes to the music industry, anything is a lane as long as you're willing to invest and create it okay. and have self love and respect for yourself. Uh, most important thing is have loyalty to yourself and don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't do it. Um, there's definitely all kinds of lanes, you know. Um, but you have to empower yourself and then put in the work. And it's a lot of hard work to be in this industry. Um, I went out last night, <laughs> fly, I'm in the background, my homegirl's at her spot, right? And she introduces me to the bartender and she's like, oh my gosh, you are real. Like you were like the urban legend. I've been dying to meet you, 25 year old young girl telling me like you're actually real, Trini C, like people have talked about you, talked about you, talked about you. And I'm just like, wait, what? And again, as a female in a market that's usually dominated by hip hop and R&B, I sometimes like don't realize the greatness that I've put in. But if a 25 year old similar to some of my children's age tells me I am in a legend, <laughs> it just feels so amazing and I have more work to do. I will, I will have to think so because I think, uh, I don't know how I came across you, but I'm originally from Florida. Right. And we got in contact, but we never seen each other in person. Right. And I think it was at a concert or yep. something. Yep. Anyway, so I pulled up and, you know, I was just hanging outside because, you know, most of the time I really just hang out by myself. Right. And um, this group of women just come outside and this lady just start freestyling, you know. <laughs> really? What's yeah. her name? <laughs> her name is Trini C. She just started freestyling. She's just going and yeah. going and going. And I was like, I had to bring the entertainment outside. I was like, that's that lady. That's that lady. That's Who's her. That lady? Yeah. In person, in flesh. Yeah. And I think one of the things, like I said, I'm doing is sharing sharing the knowledge that I have because it was really hard trying to enter the scene and not have a clue. Mm -hmm. But also, people do, people just hoard information. Right. Um, and it's kind of like you don't want us to grow. You don't want us to be successful. Are right. you being so clicky? Right. But when you die, where is it all going to go? Right. So I am being very intentional. When people come up to me, I want them to earn my risk, earn my time. My right. time is, you know, valuable. Exactly. Um, but I've been I've been more willing to be like, oh, you should do in in the right spaces. You should do this. Not telling people what to do when they ask for it. Right. Giving them that grace and understanding to grow. Because if somebody would have. One person gave me the mic. His name is Teacher You. He's mm -hmm. back in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, and he was like, oh my gosh, you're good. And he gave me the mic at a bar called The Five Corners and had me get on stage. Mm -hmm. And if he had not handed me the mic, my voice would not be as powerful 25 years, 24 years later. Wow. Incredible. And shout out to him. Unforgettable. Now, as far as the music scene in Minnesota, um, they, they have a lot of uh, open mic events. Yes. Right? What do you uh, think about the music scene here? First of all, shout out to AK, who's been holding down our open mic session uh, season slash everlasting 
momentum at the Red Sea for probably over two decades. Open mics are important. I believe the music scene is coming back. We are having a, mo a lot more black owned venues again. Um, but it, it, it's that, it's gotta be more than a DJ. And, not, and shout out to my DJs, I love our DJs. But music is entertainment. People have to understand they want an experience when they go out. When they go out to eat, either they want a Burger King experience and then they want that quick satisfying and that smoke flavor, or when they go to a steak at Murray's, they want that upper class experience. There's different, stro different strokes for different folks. Um, I believe we are coming back. I believe we're finally bouncing back from Mr. George Floyd, may he rest in peace. Uh, Dante Wright, Philando Castile, and not to mention the pandemic. And people are just craving the scene, the entertainment, the real entertainment, the production. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity right now. Okay, okay. A lot. Yeah. Okay. I just feel as far as open mics, you know? Yeah. We, we have the, uh, it's bigger than the DJs. It's it bigger is. than the open mic venues. Yep. We need these uh, radio stations that play music yep. for us and everyone else to, you know, start having local love, yeah. you know, and really getting out into the city because, right. you know, we, we, you know, there's a lot of artists out here and they want to be heard. But, right. You but know. they got to put in that work too. Like of just course, me saying you want to be heard and I'm not heard. But I mean, you yeah. have to, if, if I'm a bigger artist yeah. and I have a footprint in the city, right. I have to be approachable too. Right. That part. You know? And you have to be able to heed the knowledge of those that have been in the spaces that too. to give you the that space too. to perform. That because too. sometimes we'll be like, oh, you old head, you don't know anything. Man, I can walk into any club right now. And see, that's the and thing. And they'll give me the club and with that's no why problem. We, we go back to the first segment where right. we was talking about respect. Right. You know, if you if you, you can't. And hosting respectable you know, events. Exactly. It makes the club money. Exactly. It makes the club open. Well, yeah, I understand that too, but right. I mean, I'm the artist. I'm here to perform. I'm right. paying $20 but to also, get but, in right. and $40 for drinks. Yeah, and, and, and your money and your time is a value. But right. just what I'm saying, and I'm going to drop a gem real quick. If you want to continue to be in these spaces, you have to respect the space and the dirt that you're standing on. Right. And there was forefathers that either laid that dirt or continue to turn over that soil. Right. And if you want that soil to continue to be nurtured and rich, and it has to be watered, you need to make sure when you turn the hose on that you're paying for that water the right way, whether it is showing the club love, having respectful events where there's no drama and violence, and you're doing what you say you're gonna do. If you're gonna come on that stage and blow it up and perform, you do that. If you're gonna bring 10 people, you bring 10. If you're gonna bring 100, you do it. But you be a man and a woman of your word. And if you want to keep on coming back and doing it, you respect the gift that's given to you to be in those spaces. Right. On that soil. And it's a competition, but we still want to lead with respect, you Period. know? So, yeah. I could well, say so much more, but we don't have time. Thank that's you. All right. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for putting me in the hot seat. Ah, it's been a pleasure. Bam. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Smoke D, House of DJs, Black Medallion Radio. And when I'm in town, I'm always checking out Hip Hop Nation on First World TV. Tune in. Chat bout. My name is Buddy McClain, and when I'm in the Twin Cities, I watch On Stage, brought to you by First World TV. What's up, your big homie? And we back. 50 years of hip hop celebration right here, 1301 10th Street North. At the Phyllis Wheatley Field, I got the lady responsible, Miss Nikki Love. What's happening, baby? Hey, Divine. What's happening? I What's love happening? you, Divine. Love you back, baby. Love you back. You did a great job pulling this off. Smoke D help. Smoke D did Smoke D. Smoke D. <laughs> I think I know what that means. So, uh, how did you, how did you, was it hard to put this together? Well, it was Smoke D idea, and uh, we knew that it was 50 years of hip hop, August 11th, 2023, but you know, it started August 11th, 1973. That's so right. So this makes 50 years, and you know, man, you used to do classic hip hop, baby. That's right, they on the radio. On the radio, KMOJ. We got the ties. Classic hip hop, Nikki Love and DJ Divine. And we ain't done. But anyway, it was his idea, so he asked me to do the logistics and do my part. They did tell me to stay in my lane. I did make 16 bars, but they told me I couldn't use them. You did a hell of a job, let me tell you, Nick. As always, when you put some stuff together, I almost cursed. When you put some stuff together, it's together, baby. Thank it's you. together. Thank you. You did a phenomenal job. And I'm glad you're here, because you're my man, you know that. You're my number one. <laughs> That's right. Hey. 
live on stage, Hip Hop Nation, DJ Divine, Nikki Love. It's the best. Peace. What's up, y'all? I'm Nicole Pacini. When I'm in the Twin Cities, I watch Hip Hop Nation on First World TV. Two, three, seven, seven, three, four, five, six. We definitely gonna have a good time today. I have this uh, light skinned dude in the building right now. He's called the one and only Black. Oh, the dark skinned dude. My bad. What's up, Black? What up with you, my dude? How you feeling? Oh man, I'm good. If you can get close to that mic right there. How you feeling? What a feeling. You know what I mean? What a feeling? What a feeling. Yeah, man. something like that, right? That's what today is all about. That's what it's about. What a feeling. Okay. I see y'all rocking y'all heads with me. Y'all feeling what I'm feeling. Okay, D Mac. You gonna vibe with me on this one, dog? Let's see. It all started when I was a little boy. While the other kids were playing with toys, I heard this beautiful sound. It came from out of my mama's bedroom. That's when I knew what I wanted to do. Let me express it to you. What a feeling, what a feeling. Oh, y'all, what a feeling. I get when you come around me. Hey, hey, what a feeling, what a feeling. 